This is a dinosaur tsunami threatening to engulf my park just like real life tsunamis wreak havoc all over the world every year. And I, a college engineer with a caffeine addiction, am going to engineer four different defenses using real life techniques to see which is the most effective in saving my park. Just like tsunamis in real life, dinosaurs tend to have a reputation of being destructive. So we're going to be tracking two dinosaurs, Rexy and Blue, and see who can get more kills by the end of the video. But first, we need to see how all of this chaos came upon my park. Just as there is an antagonist in every Jurassic movie who causes the whole operation to go wrong, there is an evil engineer here who wants to see the downfall of the park. There's no way that I'ma let a computer engineer build a better park than a civil engineer. I'll release a horde of dinosaurs onto his perfect one enclosure park, and then he'll be forced to admit that civil engineering is the superior engineering. We need to stop the schemes of this evil engineer, but there are a set of project rules that we've been given by the JWE board. We are going to have a 10 minute timer which starts once we release the dinosaur wave and ends once the timer goes up. Second, we're not allowed to just close off the flood with one wall the whole way through. Throughout this video, we will be judging each park's performance based off of a number of factors. First off, we're going to be looking at each of the park's stars that they have after the disaster comes upon the park. Second of all, we're going to be looking at the profit. Third, the safety rating and the incident prevention. Fourth, we're going to be looking at the dinosaur threats, which will appear up here at the top where the dead dinosaur sign currently is. And last, we will be assessing lawyer fees. The first defense that we're going to be testing out is sea walls, or rather, as we would call them here, dino walls. I'm going to switch over to my complex 3D modeling engineering tool to help explain this concept. For a long time, seawalls have been a very cost-effective and simple way to help prevent tsunamis from reaching the major towns and cities. The concept is fairly simple. Since it's a wave coming towards the shore, you build a wall to protect all of the residents. As you can see, it protects, protects the water pretty well, doesn't let it come in and hurt the residents. This type of defense has been done even since ancient Rome. However, where it can tend to fail the citizens is when you have water that, that's much higher than regular. and it, it just overflows. This type of disaster happened during the 2011 tsunami in Japan. Because dinosaurs aren't a fluid, I'm not sure how effective they will actually be in splashing them back, but it is one of the defenses, so we need to try it. In order to do this, we're going to take our most sturdy walls, the concrete walls, and we're going to run them back and forth, back and forth. We just finished the sea walls, and they look like they might be effective, but only time will tell. We're going to turn off the dinosaurs don't starve, so now these carnivores will start to get hungry for some meat. Remember that we're going to be tracking Rexy, and we're going to be tracking Blue. One last thing before we release the dinosaurs. Throughout this video, we're going to be using the engineering method to try and have the best chance that we can to stop this tsunami. The dinosaurs are hungry, and they are ready to be released onto this park. Let's see if our defense can stop them. 3, 2, 1, go. Here comes the wave. Oh man, this is a terrifying sight to behold. Blue is still back here, but Rex is making her way forward. And we have our first dinosaur threat. Why are you sleeping? If you're hungry, just go get your food. Why, why would you be sleeping? Anybody going on the hunt? Oh, we got a raptor. Oh man, that, that's just brutal. That's just not okay. Oh man. Is that Rexy? Rexy, you ate someone! Alright, Blue's making her way through the maze. Rexy's already over here. I think you're hunting. Oh, yeah. Oh, you just... What about you? Oh, man. You're hunting someone. Alright, and that's 10 minutes. Oh, man. This looks brutal. 52 dinosaur threats. We need to see how many Rexy and Blue ate. Blue didn't quite make it through. 
Rexy, on the other hand, Rexy ate someone. We're gonna have to do a lot of growth if we want to have any chance of protecting our park. For this next event, we're gonna be trying to kill the tsunami at sea. How engineers would like to kill tsunamis at seas is very simple. A tsunami comes towards the shore like a slinky, and with a number of well-placed islands along the way, you can cut it up, putting it into smaller pieces and dissipating the impact as it heads towards shore. While this has never been done in real life, there's talk of using all of the plastic waste in the ocean to be able to achieve this. Unfortunately, we have no ways to make islands in this game, but fortunately, we can make mountains, which, essentially, if you think about it, are in fact islands. So all we're gonna do is take this raised terrain tool and place a bunch of islands in the path of the tsunami. Now hopefully, this will deter the dinosaurs from trying to cross over through the chute into there. But, again, they aren't a fluid. They're not going to splash back into their pen. They will go as they please. Alright, these dinosaurs are hungry now. So, what we're going to do is demolish these gates, and then go ahead and start the timer. And Blue's already off to the races, hungry and looking for some food. Rexy appears to be asleep, and these islands don't seem to be deterring the dinosaurs at all. They do not care. If anything, this is faster than the seawalls. They're doing all of my daily stairs activities for me. Meanwhile, I'm just sitting here, eating my peach cobbler and playing video games. Blue is the first dinosaur threat, and on the hunt, Blue on the hunt, looking for food, and gets one. And you are on the hunt as well, Velociraptor 315, 264. I feel like I'm talking about clones, not not dinosaurs. <laughs> You're just knocking people over. You have a specific person in mind right there, purple shirt. I see you. No, I think this dinosaur is just bugged. Got a raptor right here. You ate her and her friends playing dead. Wait, where'd he go? He just disappeared. Hey, I've gone like hours without a snack, and I know how that makes me feel. So imagine how a dinosaur feels when it's hungry. Don't worry, we're, we're trying to feed them. The guests are all right here. All right, let's see what Rexy's up to. Rexy, just making her way downtown, walking fast, paces past, and I'm gone now. I don't think that's how the song goes, but... Oh, you're haunting someone. Monch, monch, monch. You know, it, say, it says you've been hunting for quite a while, but I think you're just bugged. Buddy, are you doing okay? Do we need to diagnose you with some sort of velociraptor mental disorder? Are you gonna be able to get anyone? You're just pushing people over. Hunt failed. Look at all these people around you. How are you gonna fail a hunt when there's 400 snacks? Monch, monch, monch. T-Rex 72 managed to down a human. Oh, you got a worker. That's the first worker I've seen. It's been 10 minutes. We, it's, it's not looking good, if I'm being honest. We got 99 threats. First of all, we have Rexy, with a grand total of one kill. Additionally, we have Blue, and Blue also has one kill. This puts Rexy up to a grand total of two, and Blue up to one. What a failure! You didn't even stop the dinosaurs in the slightest! Okay, the last method did not go great. It, it pretty much did nothing. It was like it was like if we just didn't do anything at all, except it cost more money. I'm getting laughed at by this this other engineer, and and we really need to figure out how to pull it together. So here's the next idea. We're gonna be using floating shelters. Essentially, you would have a building that's regularly on the ground, but there's a cable underneath it, so that when a tsunami comes underneath it, it can literally ride out the waves. The people would know long enough in advance to get into the shelters because of the way that internet cables across the ocean floors work. These cables have the capability of detecting seismic activity by measuring different parts of the signals that they already transmit. A couple of vertical shelters already exist in Washington and in Japan, being able to protect people from tsunamis. In Jurassic World, there's no chains. You can't tether something to the ground and have it float in the air. And also, you can't make something that's just infinitely high, but what you can do is you can take a mountain and put something on top of the mountain, so that's exactly what we're gonna do with these shelters. <clears throat> we've taken as many of these shelters as we could, and we've managed to raise quite a few of them, like this one right here. That's a regular Mount Everest right there, that's what that is. That, that, <laughs> that looks good. Once the first dinosaur gets a kill, 
we will open all of the shelters. It is time to demolish all of these fences and see how the floating shelters work. Who is going to be first? Blue is already off to the races. Got quite a few dinosaurs coming up over here. Who is it going to be? A T-Rex or a Velociraptor? Oh, who's the dinosaur threat? It's blue. You going to go get some meat, girl? Nope, blue's sitting down. There you go. Now it's time to open all the shelters. Let's see what the view looks like on the ground here. Are you guys coming to the shelter right here? There's a lot of dinosaurs out front. You better run quick. These people are so conflicted. They want to get to the shelter, but they can't get past these dinosaurs right here. Don't worry about this guy. He, he's harmless. He's not gonna he's not gonna eat anyone. Everyone's going in here. You, you can see them all just streaming in. This dude looks like he ran from the other side of the map. Alright, these two Rexes have quite a few people trapped back here. They're gonna have to make a break for it if they want to try to get to a shelter. Oh, you got someone. You did not make it to a shelter in time, good sir. Listen, if I was this man, I would be scared out of my mind. I would be like, this is the day that I'm gonna meet my maker. You've got someone on lock. No way, you just missed that. Oh my gosh, she's juking you. You're getting your ankles broken worse than the freaking Mavs did at the playoffs this year. Oh, you got her. You got her. All right, and with that, we come to 10 minutes and the end of our time. This is not looking great again, but I think it was probably more successful than the last one because at least this time humans had shelters to run to. Did Blue or Rexy manage to get any kills? And the answer, zero for Blue and zero for Rexy. Neither of them managed to snag a tasty treat before the shelters were opened. You thought that those elevated shelters would protect your guests? Really? Just admit it. Civil engineers are supreme. All right. That last defense, honestly, very underwhelming. I thought it would do better than it did because it works pretty well in real life. But what we're going to do is we're going to pull something that's a bit theoretical right now in the engineering community. And we're going to attempt to build a tsunami gun. A tsunami, gu <coughs> a tsunami gun would work exactly how it sounds. A tsunami is both a wave physically and mathematically having a sinusoidal effect as it's coming in towards shore. If you were to fire a massive sound-based gun with the opposite wave effect, it would end up canceling out the tsunami, dissipating the force, and allowing the residents to be safe. Because we're not able to build one giant tsunami gun that cancels out these dinosaurs, we're going to use a bunch of little ones. We're going to use these response facilities. They have a bunch of little helicopters with dart guns, and the dart guns will tranquilize the dinosaurs. The dinosaurs are hungry and ready to be released. The way that this is going to work is I'm going to take a helicopter and tranquilize any dinosaurs that are dino threats. While the rest of my team has all of this undercover, I'm going to see how hard it is to actually tranquilize the dinosaur. See how hard it is. That's one hit. That's two hits. That's three hits. T-Rex down. One on the raptor. Oh, raptors just take one. You know, I used to have a channel called Sky Sniper. I'm not much of a sniper now. Anyways, I think I think this may have been a success. We'll just have to we'll just have to wait and see. Rexy and Blue. Both were tranquilized in the midst. No kills. It's time to go ahead and see the damage that was done to the park by all of these tsunamis, but more importantly, to see which real-life engineering method was the most effective in stopping it. In the seawall's defense, three quarters of a star, 8%, 23%, minus 285,000, dollars 52 dinosaur threats. For the kill it at sea method, three quarters of a star, 263 guests, 8%, 23%, $275,000, 70,000, 99 dinosaur threats. Floating shelters park, three quarters of a star, 341 guests, 9%, 23%, $268,000, $70,000, 99 dinosaur threats. Tsunami gun, four and a third stars, 2,578 guests, 23%, $295,000, $70,000 in lawyer fees. 80 dinosaur threats but before you go any don't go anywhere don't leave this video because there's one more method that we have to do there's one more thing we have to try that's always done in engineering and that's the do nothing method basically it's saying is it more cost effective and solves a problem if you just leave it where it's at instead of trying to engineer a solution
Go watch this other video to see how I built this perfect one enclosure park. Rexy got more kills than Blue. And here are the winners of our engineering defenses.